What's up guys, my name is Michael and welcome to my YouTube channel. And today we're gonna go over prefix sum array. So basically, I had to use this prefix sum to solve another problem and I didn't really get to explain it to you guys how it works. But this is a pretty easy, uh, it's kind of like an introduction to dynamic programming, more likely. What we're gonna do is, let's say I have an array. And we're actually gonna index it by zero. Okay, so zero, one, two, three, four. And let's say I have the numbers zero, one, two, three, four, five for simplicity's sake. And I want you to sum up all the numbers given an index, okay? So let's say I have index is equal to three. I want you to sum up all the values from zero to three. Let's call this array A, okay? We're gonna call this array A. Okay, so like if you're gonna think about it, how to do this, okay, so how would you do this? You would probably sum up all the values from one, two, and then up to three. And you're like, okay, okay, that makes sense. Makes sense. But here's the problem is that this takes a lot of time. Let's say I'm giving you index five. I have to literally add up all the values from zero to five, right? And to do that, you would have to use a for loop, right? And then you would have to literally add up every single value up to zero and five. So look, so if, if I add up, if I give you index five and then I have to add up all the values from zero to five, zero, one, two, three, four, three, four, and then five. But here's the thing is that Whenever you give it an index, you're actually repeating values that you're already computed. Like it, when I gave you index five, you already computed A0 plus A1 plus A2 plus A3. You already did that in index three, right? So recomputing this takes, you, what's the point of recomputing the exact same thing over and over again when you don't have to, right? Like let's say I gave you index, after I gave you index five, let's say I give you, now I want to find the value sum up all the values to up to index four. Well, you would have to sum up this again and again and again, plus A3 plus A4. But you already computed this before in the previous index at index five from zero, one, two, three, four. All the difference that you did was just add an A5. So that's what a prefix sum fixes. Pretty much what a prefix sum does, it, it for every index, it stores the previous sum added to the current index. So let's say in this, this array A, right? I wanna create a prefix sum, prefix sum of A. So what do I do? I'm gonna store every single index. So let's say index zero, one, two, three, four, five. What am I gonna do? I'm going to store every single index with the sum of its previous value of the previous sum. Okay, so based on what we see here, right? When we're back up here, index at index three and index five, index four, you see that these previous values, you already computed it. A0 plus A1 plus A2 plus A3, right? You already computed this. If I wanna find index four, I could just plug in whatever my sum was at index three into here. So like my sum at index three plus A4. Then I don't have to recompute this over and over again, given another index and then recompute it again and again and again. Right, so here, we're what we're gonna do for prefix sum, we're gonna store every single sum with its previous sum that it add up. So so in the beginning, we're gonna start with zero, zero. Reason why is because the first value of our A is zero, zero, and our previous sum is zero, right? Like there's no, there's nothing before it, so we're gonna have zero. Now what am I gonna do? At one, I'm gonna add up my previous sum, zero plus one, so it's gonna be have value one. So my previous sum, remember, is zero, and I'm gonna add it with value one. Now what am I gonna do? I'm gonna take my current previous sum, one and add with the, the new value that I have that I'm getting at index two. So I'm just gonna have three, right? One plus one plus two is equal to three, right? So now I'm gonna store that at index two. And then now I wanna up find the sum up to three. So what I do, I take the previous sum that I currently computed, which was three, add it with my new value that I got at my array. So three plus three is six, so that's six. And then now I'm gonna do the same thing over here. So we have prefix sum, my previous sum is six. I'm gonna add it with a new value that I got in my new array for four. So that's gonna be six plus four is 10. And then I'm gonna add another value of my prefix sum 10, right? My previous sum is 10 plus a at five. My new value a at five is gonna get you 15. So I just pre-computed all these values of zero, one, two, three, four, zero, one, two, three, four, five. And all these values will actually have new sum if I give it an index. So let's say I give you the index three. Well, then all I have to do is just return this value, which is six, okay? And if we look back at it, let's go back to our sum of our array originally. Does this actually equal to the sums of all the values up to the index? Well, let's see, uh, zero, let's sum up all the values from at index zero to three. So let's do zero, 
what's the index, what's the value at index zero? It's zero plus one plus two plus three, and this is equal to six. So the, our prefix sum does work. It actually does compute all the previous sums added up together up to the new index. Okay. So what prefix sums sum does is it al allows us to pretty much get a previous value, store it every single time when we have a new sum. So like let's say in this case. Uh, index three and index four. I'm gonna after I calculate this sum, I'm gonna store it and then into a sum array. So then I have the sum three and then I add it with a new value. So that's what a prefix sum does. I just created a prefix sum array of this. And yeah, let's go to the code of uh, how how you would implement this. Okay. All right, guys. So rather than just rewriting the whole code and creating like a new class and stuff like that, I'm just gonna show you the, the implementation of Geeks for Geeks. So how does this work? So what we're going to do is we're going to pass in our array into this function, which is our the original array that has all the values in it. And then here's the size of the array. The n is the size of the array. That's what they did here. Uh, and they also pass in a empty prefix sum array. Okay, so how do you do, how do you how do how do you start this? Well, you first just like what we showed you before. We first set the prefix sum at the zeroth value to have the exact same value at the value at the array at zero. All right, because in the beginning, your prefix sum is there's what is it at the previous value? Well, the previous sum is zero. So zero plus our current value at our current array is going to be the exact same value as our current array. So that's why we have the prefix sum at zero is just going to be the same value as our the at the zeroth value of our current array. OK, so that's what this does. This first statement does. Then what are we going to do? We're going to loop from one to n. And the reason why we loop from one to n is that we're from one to n, what we're going to do is we're going to take the previous value, the previous prefix sum that we previously calculated, the previous sum that we previously calculated. We're going to take uh, the current index i minus one that we previously calculated to get the previous sum at the previous index, right? And then we're going to add with our current value that we have, we're going through in the array. And then we're going to store that into our new prefix sum at our new value of i. Uh, at i, yeah. So this is going to go from one to n, and it's going to fill up all the values of the prefix sum. And yeah, so to do this, you could just call this function, pass in these two elements of prefix sum. You and yeah, you pass in the elements of the prefix sum. It will create your prefix sum array for you. And then, given an index, you probably could just return whatever prefix sum at that specific index, and that will literally just return all the values of the sums of all the values from zero up to that index. So yeah, that's how you do this. That's basically how this code works. It's, I hope this video was pretty helpful for you guys. It's a pretty quick video, but yeah, rate, comment, subscribe. I'll make another video to that later today, but yeah, peace.